Hello everyone, I'm Entom64. I'm the Flamecler. And I'm Richie. And continuing our quest to cover basically every Sonic game in existence, we now bring to you something you have seen on many a Let's Play channel before, a full playthrough of Sonic R for the Sega Saturn by Traveller's Tales, who also did the Mega Drive Genesis version of Sonic 3D Blast slash Flicky's Island. So you'll know, you know we're working with quality here. Flame, tell us a little bit about Sonic R. So, Sonic R is my all-time favourite karaoke racing game. <laughs> that, that, that is fair. This soundtrack is, like, actually incredible. It's fantastic, yeah. It, it has no business being as good as it is. This game, it wasn't Sonic's first foray into racing games in that this does follow after Drift and Drift 2, but it's the first time we see Sonic racing on foot and it comes with its own weird quirks and mechanics which similar to the last game we covered chaotic so that may be a bit of a divider for some people it might filter a few people out but i actually do genuinely enjoy this game a lot i feel like it has an interesting conceit and if the concept was polished it would be a good game but as it stands you have what five tracks and like a handful of characters you're not getting much bang for your book here on top of very sloppy physics and whatnot so i had to include that load screen just once because that is such a cool render like showing off the sound's reflections and everything i will stress i am playing the saturn version here because this is one i think looks the nicest okay. that is fair the pc version well, I think there's actually two PC versions, like an IBM one and a CD-ROM one, but they're both functionally the same. That's the version that will get ported over to the PS2 and GameCube collections. This one sadly got lost to time a bit, but what you trade off in draw distance, you gain in this really cool colour filtering. It's almost glassy-like, I think it's really pretty. It is, actually. I didn't have a Saturn growing up, but uh, like Flame mentioned, there was a CD-ROM version of the game, and I did have that. Uh, playing it on a keyboard, not the best way to experience the game. Uh, I think I had a controller at one point, but I was kind of like, you know, I've, you know, I've had enough supersonic racing. I'm going to keep my feet right on the ground. Thank you very much. So uh, the game came out in uh, '97. Um, it didn't score as badly as one might think, actually. It has a 70% uh, a for the PC version on game rankings, and a 69% on uh, the Saturn version. Nice. Fair. Nice indeed. Who would you say your favourite character to play as is, uh, Flame? I will say on the whole is Sonic. This is a Sonic run, but the characters do have their own specific character traits, so you got... Tails and Knuckles, you can kind of predict what they are. Tails can fly, Knuckles can glide. Knuckles is gliding, this is a bit shit, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. um, you got Amy is in a car, and Eggman is obviously in his mech thing. We get unlockable characters that we get through racing them. So, like, Metal Sonic here, he's kind of like Sonic, but he doesn't have, like, the spin dash shit and whatnot. He, like, I don't really use the extra unlock characters that much on the whole. I don't recall this at all. Like, what did you do to trigger this boss fight, for lack of a better term? So, I am glad you are there, because I do have a little bit of housekeeping to get out of the way with how this playthrough is working. In that, in order to get to the character races, you need to collect five of the little brown Sonic tokens that I've been collecting as we go along. What I've also been doing as I go along is collecting the Chaos Emeralds. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing to stress is... I've done these both together in one run in the interest of time here, so we're seeing each level twice rather than three times. In the Saturn version, you do actually need to do them in separate runs to unlock things. So if you get the Sonic tokens, it will go into the boss fight and the Chaos Emeralds won't count. You'll have to go back to them after the fact. I believe that was changed in the PC version, so if you play in the PC ones, you're fine. Actually, as I believe I did say in the Fourth Codex, I actually played Tonic R as a child. I was going to say, you're very forthright with your comments on this one. So yeah. you're, you're either being a good co-com for the sake of being a good co-com, or you actually have experience. Oh, look at Metal Sonic. <laughs> He's so sad. <laughs>
I know. But yeah, I do actually have experience with this one. Um, and it was on the PC. And I do remember actually, yeah, completing it. So got all the characters. Well, I think I completed it. Got all the characters. Got all the Chaos Emeralds and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think really the, one of the main things that Sonic R is really remembered for is, for starters, its soundtrack. But secondly, it's also for introducing the world to uh, the Tails doll. Oh yeah, that epic meme. <laughs> and all of the terror that comes with the Tails doll. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it's a it's a fun title. Like it's got its flaws. Don't get me wrong, but um, like it's it's a fun enough racing game. It's just there's not really necessarily enough content here to make it really worth your while. I mean, Flame is basically here going to complete the entire game in half an hour. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and uh, you know. C controls aside, which I guess is more physics than anything, it's not a bad game per se. Like, I would not put it on a top 10 list of bad Sonic games, let me put it that way. Yeah, it's one of them that... It's, it's got these sort of wacky Sonic antics that, you know, you can sit and have a giggle at, because, like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's jank. The control's a bit funny. The game's piss easy in the fact that, you know, I'm going out of my way to get the Chaos Emeralds and all these tokens and still winning first place in every race regardless. You know, like, you got all that to it, but you know what? I'm having a good time doing it. Yeah. And, like, here's one that there's been a couple of times where I've just booted up the ROM and just race true just for the fuck of it you know you know like it as a full title released on the saturn back in the day i can see why you'd be miffed about this but if you got the collection i think it was a gems collection this one was on and this is like an extra thing on top of sonic cd and sonic the fighters then you know you're probably gonna see it a lot more favorably once again it's, it's that whole context thing um like i mean i remember with the PC version. I don't remember it being all that expensive, but then to be fair, I didn't really, you know, understand money back then as a child because it's not really something that you dealt with. Um, but I don't remember my parents ever sort of kicking up a stick about buying it, which they did normally do when things were sort of a little bit more on the expensive side. Um, so it wasn't that bad, and yeah, for what it was, just it was just a fun little old time. See, I I have a physical copy of the PC version of this. I I would I've never tried to get it to work on modern systems because it takes a bit of fucking around. My main memory of playing Sonic games on PC was actually uh, Sonic 3D Flicky's Island. Okay. I had the PC version of that, and I will say that playing that on my computer that I had back then, which was my mum's old work computer, didn't quite go too well. I, was too young to understand the exact reasons why it felt jank, but it felt fucking jank. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember having a small soldiers game where you essentially make your own character, and that thing ran at like two frames a second. My computer just could not run that shit. But in addition to R, I also had the PC version of CD, so that's how I first played that game. And I gotta say, it felt so different to other Sonic games that I enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. Like, I, I know, I get flack for saying this, but CD is my favourite classic Sonic game, probably Tiger Mania now, but it, it does have its very own identity, which makes it stand out. I mean, that's nothing to be ashamed of, really. Nothing. No, never apologise for liking a piece of media, unless it's like actually illegal or something, and then uh, maybe you should go to jail, etc. But uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I did pirate all those Sonic games, so maybe you step that back a bit. <laughs> <laughs> the Tales doll, a meme that uh, entered the mainstream sort of recently, I suppose. He had a thing in uh, the Archie Sonic comic, and just basically in the fandom, he's like, oh, big scary doll thing that's possessed and whatnot. Like, the whole creepypasta thing is such a period piece, really, isn't it? <laughs> in terms of the internet history. Yeah, it's like that and Tails Gets Trolled is like the eponymous sort of like, or, well, no, the apocryphal Tales in the Sonic fandom. Yeah, it was like the precursor to the AMV blow-up, really, wasn't it? Like, there's different steps of the Sonic fandom, <laughs> you know, different periods in history. Yeah, you should be able to just tell by the tone of the commentary that we're a lot more nostalgic for R than we are for, say, Chaotix, even though, like I said, Chaotix is a guilty pleasure of mine. Because there's just a lot of, like, 
fun and energy here. And I was actually on a podcast pretty recently with TJ Davis, the singer for the soundtrack. Oh, wow. Um, this was the Break the Rules podcast, so go follow them on Twitter and whatnot. They do very, very heavy existential stuff sometimes. And uh, my, uh, my mate on there was, like, bringing things back to, like, Rastafarism or whatever. No, it might have been. It begins with a Z. I forget. Whatever. But uh, she's a British singer, so obviously, I guess the dude wanted two British Sonic-related personalities on there, and he knew me, obviously, from the Sonic playthrough. So that was a fun time. Uh, she's uh, very down to earth and whatnot. Uh, T.J. Davis, uh, pop uh, singer. She was a backing singer for uh, Gary Newman, D. Ream, and Blur. Uh, let's see, she was in a ABBA tribute band called Bjorn Again, which is uh, pretty funny. And uh, let's have a look here. Do, 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 do. She released the trance single Wonderful Life, a cover of the song by Colin Verncombe in December 2001. A collaboration with trance outfit Ian Van Dahl, and it reached 42 on the UK singles chart. Nice. Not bad, like, and I know she's done some other work with Richard Shark as well because she sang a couple of songs on the Metropolis Street Racer uh, soundtrack and they are fantastic as well. Like That entire soundtrack is great, I will say though. That actually does a very clever thing where it, with a lot of driving games they would sort of license songs from different genres to fill up like the in-game radio. But what they did with Metropolis Street Racer is that they actually had original songs put together in all different genres of music for different radio stations you could pick to play from. Ooh. So there's some pop stuff with TJ Davis singing. You got like uh, some. This is one weird, like really fucking weird, like electronic song that was like loads of samples of female orgasm noises for some reason. Okay. Well, of course. Yeah, there was that. There's. A great hip hop song called Let's Get It On Tonight that sounds like it's a flat out parody of like the sort of upbeat hip hop stuff, and then you listen to it more and more and you think actually this might have been done in earnest, which makes it even better. Yeah. But like, yeah, the amount of music there, like even just blending in some like country stuff, some hard rock stuff, it's a fucking great soundtrack. Even if you never played it, I would suggest looking up the soundtrack for it on YouTube. And I'm just paraphrasing here, but what uh, TJ said on the Break the Rules podcast is, um, like, she had to sing not just well, obviously, but also, like, happily. There's a very happy tone to this whole thing, which I believe is what makes art in general just so endearing. There's very little cynicism about the game. There's plenty of it from the players towards the game, but the game itself is, like, very unpretentious, you know, it's not trying to be anything more than just a simple racing game. And I suppose that actually makes a really good point, um, if sort of she said that her direction was to sort of sing happily, is, yeah, because the thing with singing is that it is possible to tell when someone is singing and smiling, and it's possible to tell when someone's singing and sort of not emoting or is sad. Um, because you end up having, you know, different tones to your voice. It's just how it works. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, just the entire feeling of the entire soundtrack of Sonic R is just pure joy. It is, yeah. And um, a couple of things about this before we move on to the next level. Uh, we've got the Egg Robo from Sonic and Knuckles here, obviously. Um, Sky Sanctuary Zone. Bad Nick, but this song back in time was actually sampled for uh, Jungle Joyride Day in Sonic Unleashed. The bit where it goes doo -doo -doo, where it sounds like whistles or whatever, that, that part is in that particular level's theme. Yeah, which is really cool. And obviously, other things with the music for R is that there was the. Was it Cash Cash who did the cover for um, of Super Sonic Racing in Generations? Yes, it was. Yes, and that was excellent. And I think that, was it T Lopes did a version of it as well? Or was oh it Can God. You Feel the Sunshine? Yeah. He did Can You Feel the Sunshine. That one, it's a, a genuinely good cover, but that's not what we remember it for, is it? <laughs> yeah, no. That was, um, if I recall correctly, uh, Richard Jock going off on a crazy nut about it. He was having a boomer moment. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like. He, if my memory serves me correctly, he's gone on more than a few of those recently, and it's not a good look. 
it's from what I can tell, given Bentley Jones mentioned that he had had to deal with it as well at one point, it seems like a Richie Chuck thing. It seems like he has these boomer moments and yeah, like, I, I don't know, now this, this has gone public, I'm very curious to see if he'll still get work or not. <laughs> Well, you know, I like Richard Jock's work. I believe he did the uh, the soundtrack for 3D Blast, is that correct? He did the Saturn version of that. Well, I'm safe in saying I prefer the Mega Drive version, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, Sonic R Man, but take it from someone who's done it before. It's not a good look to start being all... Blair on Twitter, shall we say. Yeah, also especially don't do it w when in relation to the Sonic fan base, because they, they have experience with a certain Mr. Ken Penders, and uh, it don't end well. Yeah, and uh, his comic it still hasn't released, with his fucking space echidnas or whatever the fuck they're called, and uh, given this came out in 1997, um, I'm willing to see how much longer his thing uh, takes to come out. Will it be the same span of time? Probably, but there you go. Well, I, I will give Sonic R Man a little bit of credit in that after that incident publicly, he shut up. Ken Penders doesn't know how to do that. <laughs> yep, that's very fair, that's very fair. And I'm sure Richard Jox is a nice guy once you get to know him. But, you know, boomer moments aren't really fun for uh, anyone. Anywho, uh, what would you say is your favourite level in the game, mate? Your favourite course? I don't know, because I actually do like... Basically all of these, except maybe Radiant Emerald, the final one, but you'll see what I mean when we get to that. Okay. Like, I could, some of these, like this level, Reactor Factory, can be a little bit overwhelming on your first playthrough because there's lots of alternate routes, and especially if you're looking for Chaos Emeralds, if you're looking for Sonic Tokens. It's one thing to try and look around for stuff in, like, say, a 2D Sonic game or a 3D Sonic game, like a traditional Sonic game. But when you have the pressure of racing against other characters, you know, like, even if you're not actively trying to win the race, you're just trying to find the Chaos Emeralds. You know, you still, at the back of your mind, you have, oh, Knuckles just overtook me. Fuck that. You know, like, it kind of makes it a little bit more overwhelming when you're trying to look around for stuff. So, this level... After I've played it a few times, I really like this, and I really like basically all the levels, you know. But to start with, it is a little bit uh, like I think the first level was the most beginner-friendly one. Yeah, I think that's probably the one that I would say is my favourite. I think in part because Can You Feel the Sunshine is just absolutely, lutely probably one of my favourite songs from the soundtrack, um, apart from Supersonic Racing, um, and. I think it's also because it's probably the one that is the most well put together of the, 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 the levels. Ah, okay, you were talking about levels and not music. My favourite track on the soundtrack, which is a, a recent thing for me, because after that podcast I just went back and listened to the soundtrack and uh, discovered a new favourite. It hasn't appeared yet, it should be in the next level. Oh, I think I know the one you mean, yeah, but like, I don't think I could pick a favourite song on the soundtrack, because, like, they're just all so... Like, I see this soundtrack together as a playlist, you know? Like, if I'm listening to one of these songs, I'm probably listening to all of them. That is totally fair, and, um... Honestly, I need to sort of listen to these again a bit more, because they're just box. They are, they are jams, they are tunes, even. It's kind of a weird thing to think, because I know that with music there's always this ongoing dispute as to whether certain pieces of music are experienced best as an album or as a single and that, and it's kind of weird to bring that album logic into a video game, but given how cohesive this soundtrack is, the fact that they all complement the ones that played before them, like, it does make sense that you would just listen to them back to back. And, like, I'm not saying that Sonic R is on the same level as an Abbey Road B-side for me, but <laughs> I'm not shooting that down either. <laughs> fair enough, mate, fair enough. Now, this Metal Knuckles here is an interesting thing, because uh, Fleetway, I believe, had a Metal Knuckles as a uh, part of one of their original storylines, so I'm not sure which came first. Oh. We've seen Metal Knuckles, 
like, well, we would see a fake Knuckles again in advance as well, don't we? So it's like a thing they kind of go back to from time to time. Mm -hmm. Ah, here we go. Yep, so we are going to be playing through Raging Emerald twice, as you can probably imagine. There is something I need to show off at the end, but... Well, of course, I'd be very mad if you didn't. The reason I would say this is probably my least favourite one is because there's a lot of very sharp turns. A lot of hairpin turns, yeah. Yes, which, when you're Sonic, it's difficult enough. Piece the rest together in your mind. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. So yeah, Diamond in the Sky, the theme of Radiant Emerald. This is my favourite thing on the tracks. So it just goes back to... Uh, and I really apologise if she never actually said this on the podcast and I'm just misremembering. The whole, like, positive um, vocal style of the songs in this game. It's... Um, very happy in a way that like living in the city, working out, etc. can't really reach because it's like a positive message and so on as well. Like to the nth degree, even more so than those songs. Definitely. And actually, I'd say that while no claim you don't like this level, I think I actually really do. It's probably my second favourite. I think that is in part because of the thing that you unlock um, after you've kind of gotten all the emeralds and sort of properly finished off the game. Um, because even though the hairpins are a bit of a challenge, it does make this um, just a really fun um, experience to have. And I think it's also because it's very much, you know, of the Rainbow Road ilk, and I do love a good Rainbow Road. See, what I like about this in the Saturn version is the translucent floor. That is really cool. It adds like a depth to it that you don't really get in the PC one where everything's opaque. And uh, it's this level I think suffered the most in the visual downgrade. Because like I, I know why they downgraded it. They made it like less, you know, like they improved the draw distance so there's less popping going on. Because like you, you can see stuff popping in like an inch away from your face there. So like I know why they wanted to avoid that. But this is such a killer aesthetic, you know. Like you gotta soak this in. What do you think they were trying to like? visualize here, the kind of aesthetic of the special stages of the front yours? Well, one of the things I've heard thrown around is that it's meant to take inspiration from like the inside of a Chaos Emerald. I'm not sure how much of that was Fang Wang Cream or whether that is something that they were trying to go for, but like that is the sort of vibe I get from this. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you've been collecting Chaos Emeralds and it's just it's a place full of gems and obviously you've got different coloured pathways and so on and so forth so yeah that makes complete sense to me as um, a thing that it, they might have chosen to go with how many chaos emeralds are there in the game flame because i remember it being a kind of funky number i think it was seven like i was getting two i think in the first couple and like i can't remember like, i was just getting the ones that i saw them really <laughs> Nice, 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 nice! Yes, so if we back out then we can go back in. Yay, thanks for playing, we're done! Woo! No, we're not, we've got a little bit more to go. Not quite! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what you have to do to get the other character, once, like I say, you've gone through and you've got all the Chaos Emeralds in separate runs, you'll be able to change Sonic to Super Sonic here. And when you go into Radiant Emerald, as Richie sort of alluded to and been leading up to, we get fucking supersonic racing. Booyah! And I mean, that is awesome. Um, but yeah, the, the one issue that occurs um, as soon as you get supersonic is that when you go into all the races, if you choose a different character, he's probably going to be one of your opponents and uh, he's fast with you he's also fast against you <laughs> so, so yeah. usually um if you're not playing as supersonic um you're probably going to lose potentially because uh, damn this guy can move well what tends to happen there is from when i was dicking around with this last night just for the fun of it to get prepped for this playthrough i noticed that Picking one of the first characters that you can unlock, like, well not unlock, the first characters that you start with, you'll probably be fine. It's when you pick one of the unlock characters and you're racing against Supersonic, that's, like, that's when Supersonic shows up and that's when it becomes a problem. Because, like, Supersonic 
will win. You will not beat him. He will win. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we've covered basically everything in the game, guys. We did say it was a very short title, so Flame, short and sweet, final thoughts on Sonic R, mate. I fucking love it. <laughs> I don't really have a drawback here like I usually do. It's like, the problems are obvious, so what I can say is I enjoy playing this. It's a lot of fun, it's colourful, it's got great soundtrack. I just fucking love this game. Okay, yeah. Uh, Richie? Um... Honestly, like my, I have just really fond memories of playing Sonic R as a kid, and just sort of watching it all back now just brings back all of those memories, and it just makes me feel really happy. And honestly, for all the flaws that this game does have, that just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And any game that can do that is good in my books. Yeah, very true. It is a flawed game. It's not great, but it is definitely not bad. It has a lot of soul and love put into it. If only the controls were a little bit tighter and, you know, there were more levels and just content in general, to maybe bump it up to, like, an hour of unlock time, I think it would be uh, superior. But, uh, yeah, great job, Flame. Uh, what else is there to say except you were truly super Sonic racing, my friend. We're done here. I've been Anton64. I've been the Flame Flur. And I've been Richie. And this has been the Hellfire Comms playthrough of Sonic. Oh, thank you very much for watching. Oh, all the Chaos Emeralds. Lovely job, play. Oh, it was seven. There we go. Hey, I was right. <laughs> Those 3D models actually look pretty good. Is what I will say since I'm now finishing the playthrough. See you next time for another Hellfire Comms Sonic playthrough, guys. Bye-bye.